It is time for a budget build. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Apologies for me knocking the shit out of my desk there and shaking the camera everywhere. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. You should hit subscribe before you realise how fucking garbage this content actually is. If this is not your first time on the channel, well, thank you very much for coming back. You possibly want to take some consideration into what's going up in here. For this video, we're taking a look at my favourite archetype of all time. Anyone who follows this channel will already know that Light Swan is my absolutely favourite deck. So being able to do JD Turbo builds, they're budget friendly, they're explosive, they do one job really fucking well, and I like that. That's good fun. You either lose really quick or you win really quick. But it's also really budget friendly, which is a big appeal to a lot of players, and of course the nostalgia factor is a thing as well. If you're inspired during this video to pick up the singles for the deck, you should check out Jam Jam Cards UK. They are the channel sponsors and the link is in the description for a nice discount on their eBay store. That's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck into this absolutely fucking garbage deck profile. So let me first apologise in advance if you can hear that jet engine sound. That is my laptop going absolutely fucking ham while I try and record this. So apologies about that. Hopefully we'll be able to clip that out of the audio and it'll sound a little bit smoother. Also apologies that this isn't a physical deck profile. Unfortunately we don't have access to some of the cards in this deck profile. And if I'm going to show you it I'd like to be able to show you it properly. Uh, given that there is a socialised lockdown at the moment I'm unable to visit our channel sponsors to go pick up the cards to make this physical for you. So again, the good thing with this deck is that it is super budget friendly. There is one exception to this, but it is an optional card to play. And that is Zeus. We already know that that's super expensive. But again, there are plenty of other options that you can try out instead if you don't have access to that card. But for the rest of it, it's all pretty budget friendly. You can pick it all up for pennies um, and you can build this deck on the cheap. So we start off with the namesake of the deck, triple copies of Judgment Dragon. Again, this is pretty self-explanatory. We want to turbo this out as quickly as possible. Blow up the fucking field and attack for game. That is what we want to fucking do. That's what we're here for. And continuing on with big dragon boys, we've got Chaos Dragon Levian Nair. We've got access to it so easily in this deck. Why not take advantage of that? We've got ways to search it as well, which is also very nice. It's just a big boy. Um, yeah, we fucking love Levian Nair. We've got triple copies of Starleash Safer. Again, we've got access to it much, much cheaper now than we had before. It's a really good way to get your dragons into your hand that you need to. And we are running a small dragon package throughout this build because it just adds such consistency to the deck. And again, this is a really good normal summon option. One thing I'm wary of is there are a lot of normal summons in this deck, but you kind of have to go with the flow a little bit. You are going to be milling out so many cards, so you're not going to see all of these normal summons at once, so it doesn't really matter. But again, this is a good option to use. Speaking of Chaos Dragons, we have Collapse Serpent and Wyver Burster. We already know what these fucking do. They're at one for a reason. These cards are absolutely insane. The downside with this is that there's a chance that you mill the other piece. Uh, if you wanted to, you can incorporate the likes of Chaos Space into here so that you've got a bit more consistency with that. But generally speaking with this, we want to build it on a budget as much as possible. We want it to be explosive. We want it to do one thing and one thing only. If we don't see those combo pieces, we don't care. We just want to mill and blow the board up. We've got triple copies of Raiden. Somehow I've managed to squeech it over here. Uh, I don't know what happened there. Triple copies of Raiden, the best normal summon in the deck, hands down. In fact, the best Light Swarm monster you basically have access to in the main deck. Um, you could literally run one copy of this with triple copies of Charge Light Brigade in so many different decks, and it would be absolutely insane. It gives us option to rank fours. It gives us option to synchro level eights, nice and easy. It allows us to mill cards. It's a big boy. It's searchable with Rota. What is not to fucking like about this card? It is perfect. They need more of this shit, in my opinion. Another good normal summon option, Lumina. Again, it's one of those ones that you could play at a two of instead and make room for some other cards. I wanted to play this at a nice type 40 though. You can expand on that because a lot of people get weary with the fact that you're milling out so quick that you may want to bring in other stuff. But again, I think that three Lumina works perfectly in this. Being able to just ditch stuff that's already gone to, well, ditch bits for stuff that has already gone to the grave, bring it out, extend, build your board and go on from there. It also incorporates extra mills so it allows you to go on in that respect too. We have triple copies of Wolf, probably the second best Light Swarm card. Can be a bit of a brick at times, but we've got so many different ways to get rid of it that it doesn't really matter. The fact that you just mill it and it's so free, and you know, you know, you know, 
it's so good when you have those games where you mill like multiple copies of this in one turn. It's fucking insane. I love this card so much. And I think that, again, it's mandatory to have as a three of. We have one copy of Lila in here for a multitude of reasons. Firstly, the fact that it's another name for JD Turbo options, but also the fact that it can pop back row. It can also be turned into rank fours. Again, just really good options to consider. We have two copies of Felice. This is like Wolf, but considerably more bricky because it needs to be milled off a monster effect to be special summoned, which is kind of sad, but it is also a tuner, so that is something to consider. If you have access to Halka Fibrax, you could run that in here as well. I wanted to admit it to keep it a little bit more budget friendly, given that we've already got Zeus in here, uh, but it is an option that you could consider. It can make rank fours, it can make synchros, it contribute to mill and pop cards. Everything about this card is good. The only downside is the fact that it has to be milled off a monster effect, and for that reason, we're running two copies only. We have one copy of Little Minerva. This is, again, for another name. The fact that it's a tuner, so you've got options with that as well. The fact that it can search dragons, something to consider as well. The fact that when it mills, it mills more cards. Again, it just does a few different things, but it's a one of it's absolutely fine. You really don't want to see this in your hand. It's really good to just mill from the deck where possible. And we have one copy of the Twilight Raikou. I think that this card is really underutilized. The fact that when it's flipped up or the fact that it's summoned, it can just banish a card non-targeting. Non-targeting banish, which is really important to know as well. Uh, and I think that that's a really good option to have. It also becomes a dark. So having the fact that you've got a dark in there, in there means that your chaos cards can get off a little bit easier. So there's a multitude of different reasons you can use this. Again, it's one that you could cut instead in favor of something else. But I like just having one option in there to go with. We have triple copies of Solar Recharge. I really like this card. I honestly play this in pretty much any Light Swan deck I can. I think this is really undervalued at times in favor of Charge and Light Brigade. I understand why, but I think it's a really, really good option. In fact, the fact that the majority of your deck is discardable off this, it means it can unbreak your hand, it draws you cards, it mills cards. What's not to love about this? And I think it's a three off, absolutely mandatory in my opinion. We have triple copies of Charge of the Light Brigade. Again, mandatory in this deck. You absolutely need to play it. Being able to search stuff, being able to mill stuff. What is not to love? The fact that it mills as well for cost is absolutely insane. So if your opponent tries to ash it or whatever, doesn't fucking matter. You just got to mill three cards anyway. We've got Melody of Awakening Dragon in here. Unfortunately, it can't search your Judgment Dragon, which is a bit sad. But it does give you access to Chaos Dragon Levineer. So that is something to consider also being able to discard cards to unbreak your hand to get access to levy is a really good way to set things up this is something you could admit or something you could run more dragon target options you can run more levy in here but then two of these is absolutely fine it really does you no harm to have access to levy much easier we're running a single copy of ray geki we're going second we want to blow things up and who doesn't love this card being able to destroy things nice and easy so you can get rid of important utility cards from your opponent's side of the field to be able to go into JD much quicker or to allow your normal summons to go through so you can mill more stuff. I think it's a really good option to have in here. If you don't see it, that's absolutely fine. But if you do, it's a nice touch. We have two copies of Twin Twisters in here. Again, just important back row removal so that we can get into JD as quickly as possible with minimal interruptions. It allows us to just play through our opponent's back row, especially if the deck is heavy on it. Again, you can run other options in here. There's a Galaxy Cyclone, which can banish from the graveyard to pop a face up as well. So if it gets milled, it's not completely dead. There is some legitimate usage in there. But I think Twin Twisters is a really good option for this build. And continuing on those lines, we have Harpy's Feather Duster, one of that just wipes out your opponent's back row. What's not to love? We have a single copy of Reinforcement of the Army. We already know what this does. It searches Warriors. We love that shit. We've got a really good option in here in Raiden. So absolutely you want to be able to do that at any given opportunity. It doubles up basically as another copy of Charge of Light Brigade because usually Raiden would be your target for that. So Reinforcement of the Army just helps you get there. Foolish Burial lets you dump anything into the grave that's a monster. So you can already see how this works. We've got two copies of Pot of Avarice in here. Again, because if we mill one out, then we've got a chance of still drawing into another one. But also the fact that you can recycle your materials and just keep milling them back out. Being able to use Wolf multiple times seems pretty good to me. But also there's other cards. If you mill them out, you kind of want to have a chance to see them again. This will allow you to do that and allow you to stay in the game for a little bit longer, a little bit more grindy, especially because the deck can mill out so quickly. And we've got a single copy of Light Swan Judgment here. Being able to see Judgment Dragon a little bit easier. The fact that you can just put it on the top of your deck if you need to. And then mill it out intentionally so that you can see that a little bit quicker. I think it's a one of it's absolutely fine. I wouldn't run more copies of this because it can become a little bit bricky. But having the option there seems pretty nice to me. 
For today's build, we're not running a side deck here. This is something that is built largely against what you're playing against. So if you're playing at locals, you'll know what kind of decks you're likely to play against there. Build accordingly. If you're playing online, you've got access to anything. If you're in remote doors, you've got access to whatever you've got in your card pool at home. So just think about that a little bit before you build your side deck. With that in mind, though, we are skipping over that and heading straight to the extra deck. Two copies of Minerva is perfect for me. I don't think we need to run three. We don't really have the space, quite frankly. But also the fact that I think that it's just good as a, a two of. I think a one is too few, quite frankly, for a deck that is as pure as this. We want to be able to mill cards. We want to be able to draw stuff. We want to be able to pop cards when it gets destroyed. It's a really good utility card. It's definitely the best extra deck option that this archetype has for it. Although there is some argument for Curious, but let's not get into that. Minerva is just a really, really good option to have, though. Nice and easy to main. It's another name for Judgment Dragon. What's not to love about this card? We have a single copy of Digusto Emerald for the same reason that we run Pot of Avarice. Being able to grind a little bit more, that is what we'd like to see. Uh, again, if you mill out both your cops, copies of Pot of Avarice, you've got a way to actually go back in and get your materials back in and go through your plays again. We have a single copy of Abyss Dweller. Abyss Dweller, arguably the best rank 4 in the game. Definitely the most abused for sure. Uh, being able to set this up in turn 1 if you're forced to go first or if you choose to go first for any reason, this gives you another way to play. Tornado Dragon, just a really good utility card. Being able to remove back row is really nice to have the option. Again, the fact that it's a rank 4 as well, it's super easy to make. There's also some benefit to having access to this as well as Nightmare Phoenix because sometimes you don't want to lock yourself out of that extra monster zone. And this can be made, of course, in any of those zones that you wish. There is some benefit to that, sometimes in kind of niche scenarios. We have a single copy of Baguska. If you brick and you can just make a rank 4, this will give you time to get into what you need to. Sometimes it can pause for turn 1. Your opponent takes their turn two and can't do fuck all. And in turn three, you set up JD, blow up the field, attack for game. What's not to like? We've got Zeus in here. This is a card that not everyone's necessarily going to have access to. If you don't, there are plenty of other options that you can consider in here. I think that's a really cool card, though. If you have got access to it, absolutely, you should play it in this build. No question about it. It's really, really easy to make in this. Of course, we're playing lots of rank fours, so that is a good option. But again, plenty of other options you could consider if you don't have access to this. There is some benefits, though. Fringe benefits to the fact that it's a light machine, so it makes Curious a little bit easier as well with the other cards that we've got in the deck. Speaking of curious, we're moving on to that in the extra deck. It's really, really easy to make in here. We already know exactly what this does. Been able to mill and dump stuff at will into the graveyard is really nice. The fact that it regenerates resources when it dies as well is something that is really good. This card's absolutely insane. Unsurprisingly, it needs to be played in here. And unsurprisingly, it's been abused in more than just Light Swarm. We've got IP Masqueranus so that we can make stuff in our opponent's turn. If we do go first, we set this up with other ways to interrupt our opponent in the next turn. This is a really, really good option for that alone. The fact that we can generate so many resources if we're lucky and just go explosive, this is a really good option to have access. Onto a couple more utility cards here, Phoenix and Unicorn. Uh, Phoenix being able to remove back row, Unicorn being able to spin stuff, usually in your opponent's turn along with Masquerina. Both really good options to have. Also, they give you the ability to draw into more cards, and that is something that we like to see. We've got Sayuja in here because we do make so many different resources. If you find yourself in a little bit of a semi-bricky situation, if you can make this, you've got a chance to sort of reset your hand, shuffle in some of those bricks, and go again. The fact that you'll also be rewarded by having that additional special summon to one of the zones is really nice, If you, especially if you can special summon something like a Lumina there or a Radiant, you can really set up your turn again, where you for, first and foremost didn't necessarily have access to do so. And then we round off with two different synchros. We've got Borrowload Savage here, really easy to make. Also really easy to make with links in the grave and therefore set up in the gate for the following turn. This is something we have to think about. Unfortunately, our tactic of just blow everything up and attack the game doesn't always work in the modern game. You need to be able to play going first. This gives you the ability to do so. And then finally, we have Michael, the last of our Light Sworn options for the extra deck. In fact, our final extra deck option overall. He's a really good bit of spot removal. The fact that he recycles stuff is really nice. Gives you a nice life point benefit. But also, he mills cards during the end phase. Again, what's not to love about that? And that, my friends, is all from me for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed the profile, but the fact that you've made it this far into the video, I assume you have, and hopefully you've liked it enough to have hit subscribe. If you haven't liked the video, but you still made it this far, hopefully you've hated it enough to subscribe. In all seriousness, thank you very much for making it this far. I do really appreciate you sticking along for the ride with me. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this video, what your thoughts are in the deck, and what things you're trying out to make your JD Turbo build a little bit better. But that is all from me for today. I will see you in the next one.